Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our service of evening prayer uh, from the Book of Common Prayer. Um, in case you uh, didn't uh, watch or pray along with the morning video, um, I just wanted to say that uh, and remind folks in our parish and invite people from wherever you may be uh, watching this video from, that if you ever felt like you wanted prayer support uh, for something in your life, or even prayers of thanksgiving for something wonderful that's happened to you, we have a, a dedicated, uh, faithful prayer ministry here at the church. Uh, and the prayer folks uh, would pray uh, in confidence for you and uh, would be delighted to do that, I know. Uh, I, as I mentioned this morning, I don't want to be melodramatic about this, but about a month ago I was in the emergency with a health issue and I was quite nervous about it and so it was it was really good to be able to um, call the prayer team and other folks from the church and ask for prayer while I was there. So uh, again, uh, we'd love to have you use that ministry if you would like. And you can uh, call us or email us at the phone number and address below. Um, the other thing is, uh, today I'm going to continue with reading an excerpt from uh, Philip Yancey's uh, book, um, Grace Notes. And uh, I picked the reading, and then I have to pick scripture readings that would go with it. And uh, the reading that I chose talks about uh, how Philip talks about his relationship with his wife in terms of what her gifting is for ministry and his gifting and they're a team and so I pick one reading that you'll know very well 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that talks about this uh, but then I picked a reading maybe you haven't read or haven't heard read in church at least it's the towards the end of Paul's letter to the Romans where he just sends his greetings uh, to and from people that he's had the privilege of ministering with. And I just thought it captured the sense of Yancey's reading. The problem is, I can't pronounce half of the names. So please forgive me in advance uh, as I butcher these, these names from antiquity. So we'll just take a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts to worship Almighty God. And we begin on page 18, if you have prayer books at home. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice, under the throne of the heavenly grace. And almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done 
And we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm for this evening's service is Psalm 133. Found on page 504 of the prayer book. We'll read it together. Behold, how good and joyful a thing it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head that ran down unto the beard, even unto Aaron's beard, and went down to the collar of his clothing like as the dew of Hermon, which falleth upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord promised his blessing, even life forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the first lesson is written in the 12th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Beginning to read at the 12th verse. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, 
I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you still a more excellent way. Here endeth the first lesson. And on page 21 we say together the words of the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the second lesson is written in the 16th chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning to read at the first verse. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church at Century, so that you may welcome her in the Lord as is fitting for the saints, and help her in whatever she may require from you. For she has been a benefactor of many, and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, who work with me in Christ Jesus, and who risk their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Epanatus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard among you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives, who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. 
Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my relative Herodion. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and greet his mother, a mother to me also. Greet Ascritus, Philogen, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with them. Greet Philogus, Julia, Nerusus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. Here endeth the second lesson. And on page 22, we say together the words of the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And, O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we being defended from the fear of our enemies may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, 
our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'll read from Philip Yancey's book, Grace Notes. Uh, this one is entitled, this excerpt is entitled, Who Only Sit and Click. I listen to Janet's stories of working with low-income senior citizens and hospice patients and think to myself, if I could have her job, I'd never experience writer's block again. But then sober reality sets in to correct my fantasies. There are two problems. Philip, first, you'd be terrible at Janet's job, and second, you'd have no time left over to write. And so the next morning after eating my cereal, I head downstairs to spend another day making the sound of insect clicks on my computer keyboard. Over time, I have come to see that the very differences between us in personality, outlook, and daily routine actually represent a great strength. Janet provides me with a new set of eyes into a world I barely know about. I find challenge there and stimulation. My own faith is tested as I hear of her attempts to bring hope to the lives of those who have so little. Sometimes, like now, her experiences even edge their way into my writing. I no longer view Janet's work with a sense of competition. Rather, I marvel at the difference in temperament and spiritual gifts that allow her to spend her day dealing with situations that would probably drive me crazy. I have learned to take pride in her work, to see it as part of my own service to God. And by serving her and offering a listening ear, I can strengthen her and thus help assure that her vital work will continue. On good days, I remember this principle, pray for Janet, and look for ways to help equip her for her demanding and wonderful work. As for bad days, well, you'll probably find me sitting in front of a computer screen, looking a little cross-eyed, daydreaming of the great novels I could write if I spent my time on Hill Street instead of in my basement. So I thought that was kind of a, a microcosm. Janet and Philip Yancey and their very different personalities and gifting spiritually uh, of the teaching of St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 12, the metaphor uh, of the body and its many parts working together. So I think Philip and Janet illustrate Paul's metaphor. And then I can see why Paul loved, loved this um, image. It's, I think, his most oft-used image for the church, for the body of Christ. There we go, the body of Christ. Um, uh, is, is this image of the body. And I can see when you read uh, Romans 16, as much as I butchered all of those names, he just had all these different people with different gifts. Um, but who have blessed the church and he just wants to remember them and be thankful uh, for them. And of course that's also a microcosm, an example of the illustration. So just pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your many spiritual gifts that you've so lavishly spread among uh, so many and all, so many people, all the people of the church. Help us to work together as a team. Help us to support one another. Help us to rejoice in each other. And help us to build the kingdom, your kingdom of love, uh, working together as the body of Christ. And we end with the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with me this evening.